How to Harness the Power of Your Voice to Address the Climate Crisis, Part 3, Keeping Up. Welcome back. This is the third of three videos. If you haven't watched videos one and two yet, please do that. I am Nadia Colburn here in Massachusetts with Extinction Rebellion, and we've been talking about how to use your voice, use the forms of communication that you have, and the networks of people that you have to talk about the climate and ecological crisis, raise awareness, and build momentum to be part of that 3.5% of the population that we need to make really meaningful change. So thank you for being here. In this video, we're going to give you tools to overcome common concerns and questions that you might have, and also keep you going for the long term. So. In past videos, we've talked about how essential it is to talk about the climate crisis for collective well-being. In this video, I want to talk more about how essential it also is for our own well-being. And you might be thinking, oh, but I don't want to bother people. I don't want to be that annoying downer, always bringing up the climate crisis. I don't want to be awkward. Just remember that when you talk about what's important to you, you are really being in more harmony and bringing harmony to the world and helping other people do that too. So Gandhi famously said that happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. And when you talk about what matters to you, you are bringing that happiness to yourself and also really to the people around that you and showing how you can model that kind of harmony. So talking about what's important and true boosts your mood and it also boosts your physical health. Uh, a recent study showed that um, telling three fewer minor lies a week translated to four fewer mental health complaints and to three fewer physical complaints. In other words, when we tell untruths or when we fail to speak the truth, that takes a toll on us emotionally and physically. And so we are actually boosting our mood and our health by telling the truth and showing the people around us that that is possible. The flip side of that is if we don't tell the truth, we increase our risk of emotional and physical problems. And we've seen that as a society, um, we're more and more unhealthy with the drug epidemic, racism, inequality, the list goes on. When there comes a time when silence is betrayal, Martin Luther King Jr. famously said, and we are breaking that silence, we are breaking that dangerous spiral of silence that we talked about in the last video. I wanna share with you also an image that really stands out to me. So this is, two different pictures of what's happened post-trauma. In, in the first image, you can see people are moving about, and that is actually much more effective being active in the face of trauma versus in the second movement where people are immobilized. In that case, in the second image there, people are being strapped down as they're evacuated from Hurricane Katrina, and that leads, that immobilization leads to many, many more post-traumatic stress syndromes. So by silencing ourselves, we're actually immobilizing ourselves. And by speaking out, we are helping ourselves and also those around us uh, take effective action for the situation that we all find ourselves in, which is the climate crisis. So just a few reminders. As you're talking to people, Keep your talk personal, be yourself, connect authentically, speak from your heart. Don't tell other people what to do, just share what you yourself are doing. Couple concern with action, and most importantly, enjoy your conversations. Make them really meaningful times to connect and uh, be authentic. And as you're doing that, take care of yourself. You don't want to be 
overwhelming yourself with bad news either. So do the things that you love, take walks in the country, um, play music, connect with friends, and help build a regenerative culture. I want to read to you a somewhat long passage from the activist and Buddhist teacher and monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh was a peace activist and has in the Vietnam War and remained a peace activist his whole life and helps people find inner peace even in a world that has a lot of injustice and violence and uncertainty around us. So this is from his 1988 book, Being Peace. He writes, many of us worry about the world situation. We don't know when the bombs will explode. We feel that we are on the edge of time. As individuals, we feel helpless, despairing, the situation is so dangerous, injustice is so widespread, the danger is close. In this kind of situation, if we panic, things will only become worse. We need to remain calm to see clearly. I like to use the example of a small boat crossing the Gulf of Siam. In Vietnam, there are many people called boat people who leave the country in small boats. Often the boats are caught in rough seas or storms. The people may panic and boats can sink. But if even one person aboard, aboard can remain calm, lucid, knowing what to do and what not to do, he or she can help the boat survive. His or her expression, face, voice, communicates clarity and calmness and people have trust in that person. They will listen to what he or she says. One such person can save the lives of many. Our world is something like a small boat. Compared with the cosmos, our planet is a very small boat. We are about to panic because our situation is no better than the situation of the small boat in the sea. Humankind has become a very dangerous species. We need people who can sit still and be able to smile, who can walk peacefully. We need people like that in order to save us. You can be that person. Each of you is that person. And I want to share with you some practices from Thich Nhat Hanh. This is a breathing meditation. He advises us when we breathe in to be mindful of our breath and when we breathe out to be mindful. So breathing in, I am in the here and now. Breathing out, I smile. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I calm my mind. Breathing in, I practice peace. Breathing out, I smile. And you can just choose one of these mantras and say it to yourself as you're following your breath with your mind. And this is very, very healing for our nervous system, very, very healing, both for our mood and for our physical bodies. Um, and I invite you to practice with them and they get deeper the more you practice with them. So again, thank you for being here. I just wanted to say that when I first heard um, Greta Thunberg talk, she said in her speech, what have the adults done in my lifetime? And I realized that I was one of those adults and that helped me step up my own activism. I want to be able to tell my children and my grandchildren that I did something and I want to invite my friends and community also to step up. We speak and act with love for our children and for our children's children. And this is not something that we need to be embarrassed about or worried about bringing up with our friends. Again, uh, we're really doing a service to our community when we talk about these issues and we don't need to be brass or demanding, but we can speak with love and with urgency and show that there are also actions that we can take. So, I invite you now to set a few goals for yourself, to think about what you can do, who can you connect with, who can you communicate with, how can you make this practice of bringing up the climate and ecological crisis part of your life,
so that you can help shift the mood so that there's more collective action. Uh, so maybe you want to pause this video and write down some intentions and goals for yourself. It's very powerful to write it down. And then you can post that up so that you can remind yourself of your goals and intentions. And I also want to encourage you to congratulate yourself for everything you're doing. Every little thing you're doing is so important. Remember, most people never talk about these issues. So whenever you talk about them, whenever you communicate it, whether it's by text or email or social media or on the phone or in person, you're doing something very important. So please congratulate yourself, thank yourself, uh, feel good about what you're doing. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for all you're doing. You can get more involved with Extinction Rebellion through our website and Facebook groups. Here are just a few links that you can click on. Uh, we are in um, almost every country, many, many states in the US. Uh, just search for us. We're very welcoming. There are lots of ways to get involved from very small ways to much bigger ways and taking on leadership roles. We're eager to hear what you have to say and to, as I said, welcome you. So please reach out with any questions or comments. And thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this set of videos, please also share it with friends and family. And again, 